the Virtual Fighter trailer came out and it looks surprising, right? Kind of caught me off guard, but the thing is, the, the weird thing about this trailer is the fact that it's rendered in a 1080p resolution and it's on IGN. So YouTube absolutely massacred this thing. I don't know if IGN puts their own watermark on their stuff and then they throw it up on YouTube, but they have, they eventually like render these things out at a bitrate that isn't great. I don't think they would do that because I think the higher quality videos they have, right, that it would actually work out for them. But at the same time, like, uh, this is like my biggest concern with some of these trailers is the fact that it's probably going, not going to look great, right? It's probably gonna have an issue of resolution, if not bitrate. We will check this out. I have seen some things and there is a lot of information that we need to review on what the hell this Virtual Fighter is. And there's a lot of stuff that has apparently been talked about and information that's already out there about what it is in its future. But there's still a lot of stuff that we don't have clarity on, but I think I can give you guys some clarity on it in the same vein that we talked about before, like specifically talking about it's online and stuff like that. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that um, because we've already had many discussions regarding this game potentially getting rollback, but let's see what it, what it looks like in general and how much different it is. Oh, this is already... Oh, this is already... I'm gonna knock you out. Go time, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, the trailer quality, once again, is not great, but there is a very clear visual difference. Yeah, no, that is not the same game. <laughs> that is not the same, like, practically 15-year-old Virtua Fighter V. It's funny that the animations still hold up, though. That's one thing I did think 100% stayed. Is all the really sick anims that are in this game. Oh, dude, it's so bright. It's so bright and colorful. I can't get this stuff off the screen! 6-1. June 1st, this comes out. At least, right, at least we get like a week to figure out what the hell is going on, right? At least we get a, a little bit of time to sort of like evaluate and figure out how Virtual Fighter V is, is going to play up until, you know, it eventually comes out. But dude, June Apocalypse is so real. I, the backgrounds look completely different. Like the lighting in these backgrounds, the lighting on the characters looks way different than it was before. So here's what I thought this was going to be. I, I thought VF5 Ultimate Showdown was going to be essentially just an up 1080, I'm not sorry, not 1080, but like 4K version of VF5 Final Showdown, right? Where they were going to just bump up the resolution, right? Guarantee that the game runs at 60 FPS, because I think even the Xbox 360 slash PS3 version um, is a little all over the place in terms of frame rate. And it drops onto like 55 every once in a while. I don't know, I, I've, I've heard this, but I thought they were gonna, just gonna bump it up, right? Give it, give it a new res, it was just going to be the Xbox 360 or PS3 port just looking a lot better. It doesn't seem like that's the case because the one thing that everyone was talking about earlier today is that this game is not just an up res. It's completely remade. They remade the whole game in the Dragon Engine and from what I understand since I don't play the Yakuza games, is the latest graphics engine that they use for all of the Yakuza games. So like pretty much Sega's primo visual uh, visual identity that they have throughout all the Yakuza titles is going to be pulling off this game. So immediately I'm like, all right, that's way more work than I thought they, you were gonna do, right? That immediately kind of speaks to me where it's like, if you remade the whole damn game in a completely different graphics engine, that's kind of crazy. You know what this comes across to me as? Let's let, for number one, let's look this some stuff up because I've been hearing impressions of people and everyone talking about this damn game all day. Let's look at the website because I think the website is where I got, yes, here we go. VirtuaFighter5US.com. So let's check this out here. Features, uh, challenge the greatest fighters in the world and the ultimate remaster, it's a remaster, quote unquote, of the classic 3D fighter now featuring gorgeous HD graphics. And yes, this is definitely not 
what 15 year old Virtua Fighter 5 looks like, much less, you know, Final Showdown, which came out in what, 2007, 2008? New online features and the bone crunching martial arts combat of the renowned original. Master your fighting style to defeat all challengers in the fifth World Virtua Fighter tournament and become a Virtua Fighter legend. So, number one, I'm not, I'm not even gonna go down, but it's saying it's a remaster. So, my prediction is that they might add a character, they might add like Kiryu or something like that. VF5 and the visual style of VF5, even though it still holds up and looks very good, has been around for a hell of a long time. This was, this game has been around since character 3D models were first getting serious like rigs on their faces, right? Where characters weren't really animating in the face very much or talking. I was assuming that they were gonna add a character and they were gonna like rebalance the game in some way. It being mentioned as a remaster, it doesn't look like that's the case. It looks like this is a visual overhaul, right? Experience the pinnacle of VF experience as you play through your classic modes like ranked arcade training and versus. Okay, it's probably gonna be fairly bare, bare bones. Crush the competition. All challengers compete in up to 16 players and new online modes, including tournaments and leagues. That's kind of cool. And I did notice this before. The UI is different, obviously. Uh, I don't know if I like this one more than the previous one. I don't know. I haven't played an absolute ass ton of VF5, but uh, this is big too. They they changed the visual style of the game to look more like Yakuza. There's hit sparks now. Uh, so they have particle-based hit sparks. That is very different from what VF had before, which was essentially like lighting. When you would hit certain moves on characters, you would get a, uh, a flash effect, but it wasn't a hit spark. It was like lighting, right? It, it was, it was, it was kind of unique for Virtua Fighter. I think this looks great. I'm curious how insane it's going to be. I don't think they're going to go tech in levels of hit sparks, but um, yeah, this is actually like you hit your, you're kicking Jeff in the face and a spark is flying off of them. VF really didn't have that before. It was a very clean looking game, right? And now they're going for a bit more of the Yakuza flashy stuff, which I don't think is a bad thing. I think hit sparks are great. You largely don't see them after you play the game for a few hours and they just make certain moments look pretty, you know? Judgment effects? Well, that makes a lot of sense because it's probably being made by similar people. Jesus! Akira looking more human-like than ever! Yeah, okay, so the characters are 100% way beyond the, the very stylized realism that was of the old VF, right? Like, Akira looks radically different. He looks way different, but he looks way more in the real boat. Here's the thing, and we had this conversation before where it's like, all the characters in like a game like DMC4 or DMC5 look way cooler than they do now. They look too realistic now. Here's the thing. Back in 2006-ish, when VF5 came out and we saw the character designs, Sega was doing their best to make the characters look as real as possible. That was actually their goal, right? Their goal was to make things look as real as it possibly can. But did it still come across as very stylized realism? 100%. Yeah, they 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 have very like weird angular chins and big eyes and stuff like that. But they were trying their best to make it look as uh, stylized as it possibly could. Now they now they have the ability to do that, right? Now they have the ability to actually make the characters look more real. So that's why this is coming across as a bit like jarring for a lot of people because the animations in the game were so real, exactly. Now the characters are gonna sort of complement that a little bit more. He looks a little baby-faced. Yeah, he doesn't look as grizzled as a Akira usually does. Um, so play the classic VF5 in glorious HD with updated character models, stages, and cinematics. Yeah, at least from these, these character renders, you can start to get an idea of where they're going with a modern take on what modern day Sega which is a company that doesn't make a lot of games. <laughs> which is a company that very, that makes a very specific kind of genre of a few games. And now they have to go back and make an arcade game again. I think we have to, we have to sort of compromise and put ourselves in this situation. What else does Sega make besides like a Sonic game every four years or something like that? They make Yakuza games. And then there's some other sprinkled in sort of like anime stuff kind of here and there, right? There's, and, and obviously PSO, you know? There was a very like meager amount of big budget Sega, specifically Sega in-house titles that do this stuff. A lot of this comes across to me that like AM2 employees that went to go work at uh, like Sega and then after Virtua Fighter, which was like one of their last games, uh, they went to go work on Yakuza because obviously Yakuza was extremely Virtua Fighter influenced and stuff. I think a lot of those guys sort of kept the passion where they're like, man, it would be great to go back to like the old arcade days and 
sort of revisit some of the older franchises that Sega has because Sega has officially forgotten about those old franchises outside of outside devs that are bringing back Streets of Rage and Panzer Dragoon and stuff like that. To me, this sort of screams to me of a project that somebody at Sega was able to like get an approval for like a certain amount of budget or something. And they're like, can we try to bring VF back in some way? <laughs> some folks inside Sega still like love this stuff and they want to do it. It's just getting the approval and the budget for it has probably been impossible over the years. But now that other companies like seemingly like Capcom and um, even Square and a lot of these other big Japanese companies are doing super well, I think this is kind of having an influence on them where it's like maybe we should start bringing back some of our older IPs. And that was directly talked about in a latest Sega like financial report about them investigating a bunch of older IPs like Crazy Taxi and Virtual Fighter and stuff like that. There's a reason they were sticking these games like inside a bunch of Yakuza games. Dude, look, Jean is so JoJo, it hurts. Uh, well, they were sticking all these Virtual Fighter games in them. I think they were just trying to gauge the audience of like interest and stuff like that. That's what it sort of seems like. But it mentions online in tournament leagues and stuff like that. The other thing you got to talk about is that this most likely, yes, what, number one, it's actually not next gen. It's a PS4 game. This is essentially like the PS4 Pro version of the game that you will be playing on PS5, right? So it's not truly a next gen game. Clearly looks insanely better than Virtua Fighter 5 did, clearly. But they probably didn't have the budget to go absolutely crazy with this, you know? It sort of, it sort of seems like, okay, we want to do something with Virtua Fighter, what is it? We can't make VF6 because that would just be way too expensive. What do we do with it? They graphically overhaul VF5. And here's where, like, obviously all the money went. Dragon Engine looks good. Game obviously looks better. It's probably going to look even better in motion when we get, you know, good looking videos on it. And you can actually see it yourself. But I can almost guarantee you. And we talked about this several times before. Here's where, like, the pill becomes a little hard to swallow. But there's, there's sort of light at the end of the tunnel. The pill that's really hard, hard to swallow is that Sega almost has zero infrastructure and expertise when it comes to online games. They have literally Fantasy Star Online, right? They have PSO2 and PSO2 New Genesis. Those are very specific things, big MMO style games. But in terms of their other titles, they have so few actual like 1v1 games right there's like a few virtual on games that are like kind of really old now there's a there's you think you would think sonic like racing games but those aren't made by sega sumo digital's been making so a sega racing game since like i think even some ex-members of the old sega rally uh that was remade back in the mid 2000s what i'm trying to say is that sega almost has no expertise when it comes to um online and i can speak personally from the time that i did play virtual fighter 5 final showdown that it's netcode obviously isn't the worst delay based netcode they still actually run virtual fighter 5 tournaments in with its netcode but the problem is that it is delay based right it, it is essentially what you kind of expect it is the further away your opponent gets the bigger the delay is and it's going to be a huge problem delay based netcode issues in a nutshell right but here's here's the thing um there was a rumor that came out a few days ago about how this game is going to be distributed. Here it is. So here, this is this is where the pill gets a little bit easier to swallow because I, I think it's like a 99% chance this game has classic like Sega used delay based netcode for everything. Ultimate Showdown is a PS4 exclusive that you can play on PS5 and will only be available through the PlayStation Store. But what's more is a heavily rumored PlayStation Plus titles for June of 2021 and given that Ultimate Showdown's release date is June 1st, they're going to bet that PS Plus leak is actually legit and that the game will be uh, available on PS Plus when the game is dropping. Here's the, the, the netcode issue of the game, and here's where this might soften the blow. If the game is essentially quote-unquote free, right? If you have a PlayStation Plus subscription, if you play any of your PlayStation games online, and it's a part of that, that's the best case scenario. Because it means that you can essentially just try out the game, for technically free, right? Somewhat free. If you're if you're online on your PlayStation in some way, if you use its online services, then you're already paying you're already paying for it. And if Virtual Fighter 5 is a part of a service that like what 48 million people are already uh, subscribed to, then there's a really good chance that you'll actually run into people that are close to you, right? People don't have to worry about the game is 20 bucks, the game is 40 bucks, the game is 60 bucks, right? People don't have to worry about that. You can just sort of jump in 
try it out and play people online, most likely. I'm, I'm, I'm making complete estimates on what's going on here because we don't know if this is actually uh, the PS Plus, PS Plus leak is gonna happen. All things considered, when this game comes out, I'm telling you right now, and this actually happened recently with Guilty Gear and its beta, there is going to be more people playing Virtua Fighter online than ever in the history of Virtua Fighter, right? I'm gonna break it to you right now. Not many people bought or played Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown. I'm gonna be super blunt with you guys right here because I know folks that worked at Sega in the early 2010s when Final Showdown came out. And unfortunately, the sales numbers of VF5 FFs, even though it was a really good game, wasn't fantastic. So all things considered, when this comes out on June 1st, no joke, there is going to be more people trying out Virtua Fighter than ever before. All things considered, um, the good news about this is that if it is possibly going to be on PS Now, and it is technically quote unquote free if you have a subscription, there will be so many people playing Virtua Fighter that it's gonna be ridiculous. Um, and that's always been, especially when I played Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown, when I wanted to play it when it came out back in 2012, dude, nobody was there. I don't wanna see VF tank and burn again, dude. I don't, I really don't. Like Virtua Fighter always came out the most inconvenient times. The last time Virtua Fighter did really well was Virtua Fighter 4 on the fucking PS2.